Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to address one of the questions you ask me all the time, especially when I showcase brand new c -sharp features, in this case c -sharp 11, and that is, hey Nick, if I use all of these features, will my code become slower? How is that code lowered? How the compiler handles it from high level c -sharp to low level c -sharp? Well, in this video we're going to take a look at that exact thing and see how a brand new feature performs compared to its raw form and what we can learn from that and maybe how we can optimize too. If you like the book of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell and for more training check out nickchapsters.com. And quickly before I move on, I just want to let you know that I will be running a workshop in NDC Oslo 2022 all about effective testing in C-Sharp and .NET. We're going to see unit testing, integration testing, mutation testing, performance testing, lots of testing practices and set the right foundation so you can excel in your career. And it's very likely your employer will pay for the trip and the hotel and the event. So click the link in the description, speak with your manager and your company and the slots are limited, so make sure you sort that out as soon as possible for your benefit. So what do I have here? Well, I'm going to show you everything here in C-Sharp 11 preview. And for that reason, no ID officially supports the new features. The one we're going to focus is list patterns, which I showed in my previous video. I'm going to put a link in the top right corner of the screen to watch that maybe after the video. And that kind of looks like this. So basically what was added is pattern matching was extended to support matching like this, where this first clause will match an array or a list with no items. This will match an array on a list uh, with two items and it's only going to use the second item and return that value. And then this third one will match an array of any length and then ignore the first and the last item and only give you a slice of that array back. And it's going to summarize all the items in that array. In this case, it's an int array and return you the sum. So if this is an array of one, two, three, and four, you're going to get back two and three. And so two plus three is five. You're going to get five back. And then this is the default clause. So if I was to go in the program.cs and I said something like var result equals speed comp dot match expression over here, and then I have my array. So let's say r equals new int array with one, two, three and four and I pass that down over here and I want it to just print it. So console.write line result. Here we go. And I do a dot net uh, run to that. Then as you can see, I'm getting five because this is the slice that will be matched and then that will be summarized. I'm getting five back. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the extended version of this method. So I'm going to grab the exact same signature here, match uh, expression, but I'm going to change that to match raw. And I'm going to move back to writer because I'm not going to use this feature uh, to write this piece of code so I can have IntelliSense and all that goodness. So here's how this looks here. Ignore this. This is just a writer not recognizing the new feature. So what I want is first, if an array is empty, so the length is zero, then I'm returning zero. So if incoming dot length equals zero, then I'm going to return zero. So that's the first item. Then if the length is two, which is what this is matching. So if incoming dot length equals two, then I'm going to just return the value of the second item. So return int one because it's an index and that's it. And now the third one is the tricky one. And some of you might be thinking, hey, Nick, you're using sum here. Sum isn't really efficient because it's link. We're going to talk about that in a second. So what I want is to match an array of any length. So in this case, anything that is more than a two. So if incoming is more uh, than two, then I want a slice of that array. So these middle items. Now there's two ways I can do this in my mind. I can use an array segment, which is a struct, or I can use a span and get a slice. Um, I suspect that both cases will work the same. An array segment will allow me to effectively still use the original array and but only interact with a slice of it as a segment uh, and the span will load that array in the stack and then allow me to get a slice of that array. Maybe I'll show you both approaches. I know that both will perform pretty much the same because both of them are structs and I don't have to worry about memory allocations. But just for the sake of using more modern features, I'm going to use a span. So I'm going to say span uh, of int and that's going to be the incoming span equals incoming and that can work because it's an implicit operator here. I'm going to turn that into length is more than two. And now that I have that, I'm going to get a slice of that array. I'm going to say var incoming slice equals incoming span does slice. And I'm going to start from one, which is the second item. 
and the length is going to be incoming dot length minus two one for the indexing and one because i don't want the last item and now all i need to do is have a for loop over the incoming slice dot length here and then add all those items so i need a var sum equals zero and then just say sum is incoming slice and then use the index and that's it turn this into a var and then return the sum and that's it. This will return exactly what I want. And in the end, the default clause is if nothing matches, return a minus one. So in both cases, these two things will do the same thing. Just to prove that they will do the same thing, I'm going to go back into VS Code and I'm going to use match raw here. And if I was to run this, let's go to the terminal. Then as you can see, this returns five. If I use match expression, then this will return five too. And then any other length will work too. For example, if I have a two item array this will return two if i use the raw version and run it again this will return two again so we have two things doing the same thing one using the modern c sharp feature which is very elegant very nice and one using the version we wrote ourselves so what i want to do now is run benchmarks against them and i'm going to test all clauses the first the second the third and the fourth one. Uh, to test the fourth one, all I need to do is have an array with one item and nothing will match an array of one item. So it will just fall through into the final result. To run that benchmark, I'm going to add benchmark.net. We've seen that in the channel before a million times. It will allow us to benchmark our code. And then I'm going to go ahead and create the benchmark. So I need the feature benchmark. Here we go. Um, and I need this to be a memory diagnoser without any columns here. So that's what I need. And then these are the two things I want to test. However, I want to test them with different arguments, different parameters. And to do that, I'm going to create a property, which is going to be uh, an int array, which is the item we uh, are testing. And I'm going to call it args. And I'm going to use the params item here. And this params item will allow me to run benchmarks with different parameters in this property. So first, I need an empty int array. So int array of zero is one of the ways I want this to run. Then another one that only has uh, two items. So just a couple of numbers here. Then let's say uh, quite a few items here. So one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, and maybe seven here. Uh, and in the end, just one other one with just one item that's going to be matched by the default uh, one. So that's it. That's what we want to test against. So in order to run this, I need to go to the program.cs, comment this out and say benchmark runner dot run and point to that benchmark. And that's it. Now I can go to the terminal and I can say dotnet run in release mode. And the moment I do that, benchmarks will start running once per argument. So for me, this will be around five minutes. For you, it's just going to be an edit, but you're going to see the results right away. So results are back and let's see what we have here. So the raw version for the empty array is three times faster. Keep in mind, we're talking sub nanosecond here. You wouldn't really see this difference and there's no memory allocated here. So don't worry about it, but worth pointing out that, yeah, it is technically slower. You will never see this. Um, the one with a single item is actually faster in the expression than the one we wrote. And again, remember, this is the default clause. So this will match at the very bottom. We're going to see why that's the case, why this performs slower in the version that we wrote. For the two items, the expression one is twice as slow as the raw version. And then the one that matches a slice of the array is 15 times slower on that expression approach. And it also allocates 48 bytes of memory, while the one we wrote is significantly faster and also allocates zero memory. So why did that happen? You might say, hey, Nick, you used the sum and the sum is using link and link is memory allocations. And this is why this is happening. OK, let's change that. I'm going to go here and I'm going to comment this one out. So this doesn't exist anymore. And we're going to add a method that does basically the exact same thing as we did here for the sum. And this would look something like this. I'm going to have it as a uh, nested function here. It doesn't matter. Performance will not be affected at all by this. So don't worry about it. Uh, and I'm just going to use it here. So I'm going to say summary middle. So that's how it looks like. Uh, and it's the exact same thing we're doing down below. So array is passed. We loop around it. We just add it in int and we return the value. Now, because I don't want to wait again five minutes, I'm going to comment out all the tests, uh, but the, the long one, because that's the one we care about. So that's what we're going to benchmark. Uh, and also what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a second one that has twice the items. 
And the reason why I'm going to do that is because I want to see also how it scales, for example, the memory allocations and the performance with more items being added. Does it scale linearly? Does it scale exponentially? Uh, where are we? So 14 items now in that array, twice as many as the previous one. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save that. So let's just save it and I'm going to rerun them. So .NET run release. Here we go. This is all working. And let's see what we get after that. So results are back. Let's see what we have here. Uh, so as you can see, the one with the 14 took 18 nanoseconds in the expression one and the equivalent expression one took 16. So it scaled pretty well compared it's double the amount of items in the array. However, the memory does look to have increased relative to the new array size. Um, now, the one that uses span is almost as slow, again, very, very fast, and of course, still no memory, but it looks like it scaled relative to the size of the array. So as you can see, expression and memory didn't really matter when it came to using the sum method, and we're going to see why that didn't matter. The last thing I want to show you, and I'm going to run quick benchmarks again before I move on, is the one using the array segment, which is another way you can do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to completely duplicate this code so there's no doubt in what's going on and instead of using a, a span i'm gonna do the following let's go back to writer i'm gonna say match raw with a segment and instead of using this here i'm gonna say segment equals new array segment end and this basically has similar api as the slice one you're gonna have to pass down the array and then where we start from and then the count so the count is the same thing this minus this and now we can just remove the span and the way this works behind the scenes is it just offsets the array differently internally so it starts and stops uh, from different points and with all that i'm just gonna go back to the benchmarks i'm gonna add another set of benchmarks with the segment one and i'm gonna run them again with the segment just to see how everything comes together so there is no doubt in how this is performing we just quickly grab that and save it and i'm gonna go ahead and clear this and do a don't run release and let's see so results are back and let's see so as you can see the segment one and the span one perform very very similarly no memory again because array segment is also uh, a struct so we don't allocate anything there so it's definitely worth pointing out the scaling with the expression one looks better speed wise compared to the other one but it also allocates memory which is not nice at all now why is that happening i'm gonna grab this method and i'm going to paste it in sharplab.io to see exactly how that code is lowered and i'm gonna move myself over here so i'm gonna paste the code exactly as it is i don't think i need to add anything and effectively what you see on the left is our original code and on the right is what the compiler will compile that expression into so this code over here is compiled into well this thing so first it starts with a null check now this thing is not nullable so why does it have a null check? Well, it has a null check because null reference types are more of a compiler thing and they can be overridden. So they kind of have to have the null check anyway. And then they have the length and they push that into an integer and they work with that length. And it looks like they're being very smart about their branching. So you only have two top level if statements. So that's as far as your code can go. And then they first check if there's a match to the number that we have here. So if the length is two, it's gonna match that very quickly. Uh, if not, it assumes that you're matching this clause over here, and then it's going to just call that method which is being pushed down. Now, the reason why we have the allocation is because this method is using the get sub array method. Uh, and it's doing that to get the subsegment of the array. Now, if I get that and I go to source dot 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 net and I paste that get sub array, I can see exactly what's in this method. So you can see in that array that we're getting the array in and then a range, which is the slice basically. And then we get an offset and a length out of that. And here's why you see that allocation. We're allocating the destination array because we're not reusing that original array. Instead, we're getting a whole new array allocated on the heap because arrays are reference types and we're dealing with that instead. And then the memory is moved appropriately, but we do allocate that new array. So this is why you have that allocation there. And it's something you can prevent if you write your own method. And then we have the check that if the number, if the length is zero, then return zero 
zero. And the reason why the default clause is faster in what the compiler is generating is because you go through less branching to end up to this minus one, while in our case, we go through every single clause before we go to the default one. So the compiler is optimizing for it. However, it is allocating that array, which is allocating memory. Now, here's the question. Should you care, in my opinion, not really, unless you have a problem with these memory allocations, which most likely you're going to have tons of other things to optimize before this is even a concern. I don't think it's something that should worry you. And here's the kicker. Let me just quickly like delete that and push it back to how I would have it. So like that, very simple, very minimalistic, very clear. Well, compare this, which is what? nine lines and then compare this this is a bigger win for me than the memory you're gonna save and potentially the speed now this comes down to your use case remember that but it does not mean that you should worry about features like this because the dotnet team will try to optimize as much as they can and if they made a decision they made it for a reason like the fact that this is allocated as a new array is there definitely for a reason and i would assume that this is because they don't want you to mutate in any way that original array which might be reused somewhere else and these arrays are reference types it's not guaranteed that this will only be used there so there's a reason why this is happening you should not think that they didn't do this for any other reason in our case we didn't want to mutate it so we saved the memory but if we did want to mutate it we would be mutating that original array which is bad so to answer your question no, you shouldn't worry. The DotNet team is very smart about how they do those things and you should just put faith in them. If you're worried, use what you learned in this video to know how to get to that conclusion, how slow it is, how much memory does it allocate. Can I take that hit? And if you can, use it. If you don't, you can still write your own C-sharp. All the old features are still there. So ultimately, it's up to you, but you should not be worried. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find a link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.